Adam, thanks for stealing my first question. Um, I honestly, I'm so pumped to be here. I feel like I've been going to meetups in London for about 10 years since I was a very poor um, student and all the free food was incredible. And I really think like AI demo days is like one of the best meetups I've been to in like 10 years of going to meetups in London. So I'm excited to come back sometime in the future when uh, Matt's rented out like the O2 arena or something and everyone who wants to come to AI demo days can go. I think there was like 450 people who wanted to come and there's like 100 spots. I think that's like pretty wild. So props to Madden for uh, to stack one for putting this on. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to talk to you all about uh, Zeta, which is our edit prediction model. Um, we actually released it just Thursday last week. So super kind of um, hot off the press. It's also open source. So I'm excited to talk about that. Um, first question was who's tried Zed? I'm, I'm going to ask a slightly different question. Who's heard of uh, the Zed editor? Can you raise your hands? Oh, okay, great. Well, you should just all try it. <laughs> I think like maybe 20% of the room tried it. Um, okay, that's awesome. So a little bit of backstory on why Zed is so cool. Um, so first of all, the team is like absolutely incredible. So the, the, the three co-founders for Zed, they were all involved in the original creation of Atom. Uh, obviously, Atom was super big uh, you know, five, eight years ago. Um, Atom then gave birth to Electron. That's why it's called Electron, right? Actually, Electron used to be called Atom Shell, and then it was renamed to Electron. Uh, and obviously, Electron now powers VS Code and all the VS Code forks and whatever. Um, and then also, the, the Z team built a library called TreeSitter, which is essentially like really aggressive uh, syntax parsing, which has become like the gold standard in all IDEs. So a lot of the kind of Z founding team built a lot of the core editor technology that now powers uh, what most of us use. And they decided, actually, um, Atom like, wasn't good enough. It wasn't fast enough. Like, let's go back to the drawing board and start from scratch. So Zed, the company, is actually about three years old. But they spent the first two, three years um, actually building like their own graphics rendering engine from scratch in Rust. So the core of what powers Zed is less Electron, less Chromium, less like a web browser. And it's more um, like a video game, basically. So the, the, the first demo that I actually want to show you is just like how fast Zed is. Uh, can you see this? I'm going to zoom in a bunch. Uh, and then, yeah, so I'm just like going through like the different tabs here, right? And you can see like how quickly this is rendering. I think this is actually constrained by like the Mac input. Like I'm just holding down a button and I think that's like what's constraining like the rendering. Um, so I can try and do it like faster myself. But you can see like how like buttery smooth it just like all renders. Um, and yeah, so this is Zed. This is the Zed project. Zed itself is open source inside of Zed. Um, and we're like, yeah, we actually have a very thriving open source community. So if anyone is keen to contribute, um, please do. Uh, so that's Zed itself. Um, super, super fast, uh, built on top of this like incredible foundation and like getting better uh, all the time. You should all go and try it afterwards and just um, yeah, get a, get a taste for it. It's really fast. People also really appreciate like the very minimal design. Uh, it's got like great language server support. Um, and we, as of uh, Thursday last week, have edit prediction. So similar test for this. So who's familiar? I, I assume all of you are familiar with like GitHub Copilot, but who's familiar with like the next step up, which is this like super complete cursor tab edit predictions? Okay, that's a lot of you as well. So the basic, so I don't have to explain it a lot, but the basic idea is just that you don't just like complete the UI, but you give the model an opportunity based on the recent edits you've made to make multiple edits. And then you can just tab, 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 and like refactor something. Um, so I am also going to demo that real quick. It's a little bit of a contrived example, uh, so forgive that. What we're going to do is we have... Um, what we have here is everyone's favorite uh, computer science problem, uh, tree traversal, uh, and especially the favorite subflavor, breadth-first search. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, this is basically, this is just like a super simple demo thing. So it's just a, just a TypeScript file, and I can run it with bun, and it traverses some stuff. But like, what if you want to have multiple routes? So I have a second root here. And Currently, our traverse tree function only supports one root. Um, so if I change it to roots, in theory, all of the edit prediction will step in here. So you can see, right, there's multiple edits going on here, right? We both get the TypeScript type change, so it's not tree node, it's an array of tree nodes. And then also, um, we make the first kind of refactor of this traverse tree method, which is just initiating an empty set as opposed to starting with like the root ID, because we now have multiple roots. So I can hit tab. I can hit tab again to adjust this. I can jump again, tab, 
tab, tab. Uh, I think this one is actually not correct because this should like map over it, really. No. All right, fine. We can refactor that later. And now I can give it an array of root and root2. And run it again, and hopefully it works. And it worked. So that's a very basic um, idea of the feature uh, of uh, Z edit predictions. All right, that's Slack. It's the wrong one. Uh, <laughs> So that's how Z edit predictions work. Just and then this uses our, so it's our own fine tuned model. The model itself is actually open source. I think a fun thing um, given this crowd is like just go into a little bit of detail for how this works because no one else who's really building or fine tuning these models is talking a lot about like like how they were made or how they were fine tuned. Like a lot of um, yeah, obviously this is a kind of core secret source for a lot of companies. It's how people make money, so they don't like to talk about it very much. But um, Zeta is actually open source. It's an open data set, and we're keen to talk about it. And we have a, a long blog post and also a like 40 minute discussion with one of the Z co-founders who built this. Uh, so I'd encourage you to listen to that. There's a link at the end. Uh, so the, the the fine tune was actually based on Quen 2.5b uh, coder. And it uses 400 examples. And the examples themselves uh, were both handpicked, gathered from like um, Z staff trying it out, and also actually some synthetic data which we generated with Claude. Um, then we, uh, on top of the fine tuning, we had another pass with uh, direct preference optimization, which I think was mentioned earlier. That's another 100 examples. The kind of basic idea for this is um, that instead of just giving, like, like in fine tuning, where you say, given this input, you want kind of this output, you have this problem with this feature where you end up, like, you need to teach the model, like, what not to do, uh, so that, like, you, so for example, one of the issues with Zeta was that, um, it would just predict a bunch of deletions. Like it would give you the correct refactor, and then it would actually delete like 20 lines or something. Um, and it's it's hard to teach a model to avoid that with just fine tuning, but you can do it with direct preference optimization by giving it an input and then the desired the desired output and then the rejected output. So um, that's where DPO comes in. Yeah, I'll cover the latency stuff in a second. So for us with this model, and as you can, you know, Z is built around speed and being really fast, and you could see the predictions being like really, really snappy. We put a lot of work into making this uh, extremely fast, and I'll talk about more of that in a second. I mentioned already it's open source, uh, and not just the model open source, and you can do whatever with it. You can quantize it, run it locally, um, do I don't know what other things you do with it. Uh, then, and then the data set is open as well, and we're looking for contributions on, on both. And then we're also uh, we're using LLM as a judge, was mentioned earlier as well, um, for evals. We've been using Claude 3.5 Sonnet for that um, uh, so far, but maybe we should um, check out alternatives. All right, um, so quick thing on Zeta being open source, and I think, yeah, I'm going to have a quick demo for this as well. Um, so Zeta is open source on Hugging Face, and then also... Um, we um, we have this like some cool tooling that you can just like check out to get a sense of like how it actually works. So I'm gonna get up um, the Zeta model. So this is just the repo that I cloned from Hugging Face, uh, and I can go uh, into like the the training data. And yeah, here is just like so. I mentioned there's 400 examples. These are all these examples. This is what they look like. Again, I think this is like super interesting because usually you don't see this stuff for these kinds of models. Um, so we're really excited to like show everyone. So this is an example of like a like um, negatively rated um, prediction that that Zeta made. So this is um, some some fine tuning. And what I'm going to do here is actually copy this and. Uh, put it into our uh, XML validator. So this is um, a little internal tool just to see, like, get a better intuition for how this um, prediction works. So this has a negative rating. Uh, there is, like, user-written feedback from us. But you can see, OK, actually, this is probably a bad example because you can't see where it did the deletion. Let me grab a positive one. Oh, this also doesn't show the diff. Oh, no, there it is, right there in the middle. So um, you can see the kind of like, can you see that? This is probably super small. But basically, like, um, this is like a little internal tool where you can just see, like, what does the training data actually mean? And in this case, um, we, we needed that, like, double ampersand to be added, like, in the middle there as part of the edit prediction. 
Uh, and yeah, that's one of the 400 examples that powers the, the Zeta model. Uh, all right, back to this. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, it came out Thursday last week. So far, like, it's got pretty rave reviews. Uh, people are saying it works a lot better for them than like alternatives that have been on the market for longer. So yeah, I would really encourage you to try it out. Uh, check out Zed, it's great, and, and check out Zeta. Uh, I mentioned latency was like really important to us. And again, just like keen to give a bit of back background there. The main technique we use to improve um, latency is this technique called speculative decoding. Have people heard of speculative decoding? OK, a couple of fewer hands. Basically, the idea is just that with a, a, a task like uh, completing uh, edits or showing edits, you're asking the model, like you're giving a bunch of um, the current user's code to the model. And then you're saying, OK, now uh, predict some edits for this. And then in the output tokens, you will see repetitions for uh, a lot of the existing code. For example, that, that example I just showed you, the whole code was the same, right? Except for the double ampersand that was added. So since most of the tokens stay the same, we can use this technique called speculative decoding, uh, where we essentially tell the model, we think like most of the tokens you will return to us will be the same as the input tokens. And that opens up like this kind of parallelization technique where uh, it, it's, it's essentially much faster. Uh, so th that made a big difference for latency. The other thing is hosting. So, GPUs are like really scarce at the moment. It's Zeta runs on H100s in um, in production, and uh, yeah, like they're kind of hard to come by at the moment. So finding like a great model provider was actually a bit of a challenge, and we worked really closely um, with Base10, uh, who actually made a ton of performance improvements and drove the latency right down. So if you haven't uh, come across Base10 yet to run your workloads, uh, or your GPU workloads, would recommend checking them out. They actually announced their Series C today, so congrats to them for raising uh, 75 million. Uh, and then also, actually, since we're in the in the in the office, thank you to Cloudflare for hosting and also for making a great product with workers. Um, workers essentially are like our backend server for um, uh, for like powering the edit predictions. So Cloudflare workers then calls out to the uh, to base ten. Uh, and with workers, you, you know, we have users, a lot of your users in Europe and in North America. So it, since latency is so important, like the laws of physics really do end up mattering. Uh, and with Cloudflare, we can be uh, much closer to users. And then the hop to the two base 10 clusters, one is in Europe, one is in uh, North America, is, is, uh, is kind of the second step there. And then specifically, uh, this is the kind of latencies we're able to offer. I'm, to be honest, I'm really impressed by this because I started my career building like Python and Ruby like web apps where like the median response time in production can be like five, 600 milliseconds. So the fact that on these prediction, like these like AI workloads, right? We're getting like a P50 of 176 uh, and like a 260 mean is I think like really, really impressive. And the team worked like really, really hard. And it's a lot of components coming together. It's Cloudflare, it's Base10, it's a speculative decoding. It's like a bunch of like other stuff. Um, so that, that's what makes the predictions feel super snappy. And obviously speed is so important to us with, with Zed. All right, um, what's next up for like ZAI? Uh, a couple of really exciting things. And this is also where like, you know, I'm really keen to just tell everyone like we're like hiring. Um, David uh, talked about model context protocol. Um, David actually built the model context protocol implementation in Zed back in like October, November. So Zed has model context protocol support because of him. We're keen to expand it further uh, and, and essentially get more of these uh, servers and the tool capabilities like inside of Zed. Um, we're, we're building a bunch of other things. We're really excited about AI extension points, a bunch of agentic editing, um, and just, yeah, making Zeta even better than it already is. And we're hiring and we need your help. So, uh, and I really pushed uh, some of the founders to make sure we can have these salary figures up here because I think it just really like helps m motivate. But we're hiring across the board, across engineering. We're hiring a head of marketing as well. If you know anyone, um, please put us in touch. But yeah, specifically for our AI team, we're really staffing that up at the moment. So if you want to work on Zed, if you want to work um, on models in the open, on an open source product, on the editor that we think everyone will love so much more because it's built on this incredible foundation, then uh, please come talk to me or head to z.dev slash jobs and apply. Um, yeah, we're growing really fast right now. Just raised a, um, a Series B. So yeah, really excited for the future. All right, and I think that's it. If you want to know more about edit prediction, check out the blog post. It's a cool video, lots of more technical details like I don't have time for. Um, but yeah, thank you, everyone.